Welcome to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday afternoon. It is 106 and it's a, a very warm six degrees above zero out there. How much warmer are we going to be getting for this afternoon and how warm is it going to be over the next seven days? We got that coming up on the program, a full rundown on the forecast. There are several more chances for snow and rain in the forecast. Hey, you got snow totals from the other day. You want to share those with us? Feel free to give us a call on the Red Wing Shoes phone line. That's 701-293-9000 or email weather or ag at flagfamily.com. Bridget isn't with us today, but you can still text her on her personal line. We're still looking for a sponsor for that phone, by the way, if you're interested. Again, send us an email. I'm meteorologist Justin Storm. I'm with Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki. Weird. You're actually here today. What's going on, man? <sighs> you know, I almost uh, had almost to, almost called really? in. Yeah, it's, golf course is open or something. No, a lot of a uh, lot of strenuous activity. Snow blowing yesterday. Ah, uh, yeah. You Pulled a wanna, couple of muscles. Your back probably hurts oh, from that whole man. two inches. Yeah, we had drifts as high as my waist. Oh man, that's a lot of snow. I know. Was it heavy snow or light snow? Well, it was compacted because it was drifted. Oh, are you driving over it? Nope. Good, good idea. Don't be driving over yeah, that. It really hurt your idea. back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, we did something a couple days ago. Actually, this was last week. Well, Dean and Bridget were gone. I held a little contest here on how much snow was going to fall between uh, Monday night and Tuesday night, a.k.a. this last storm that we just had, the blizzard. And we had several people call in and make their predictions. And I got the winner right here for someone who's going to win a productive alternative rain gauge. So if your name is Sue K and you guessed two and a half inches of snow, just won yourself a rain gauge. Sue, if you want to call into the studio, 701-293-9000, we'll get a little bit of information from you. Or if you don't have time to call, uh, you can just show up at the studio sometime between 8 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through a Friday. We'll have that down there at your front, the, uh, the front desk. You'll just have to show an ID to be able to claim that. But, yeah, we had 2.7 inches. No snowblower giving away this storm. No. A lot of people said, oh, I, saw, I, saw four, I saw four and three, four inches in the, uh, yeah, well, it, that wasn't at the official measuring site. So uh, 2.7 officially 2. for 2. Fargo. 2.7, wow. Yeah, close. That. Close. Didn't you say it was going to be like 2.9 or something? I said we'll probably end up with 2.9. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. man. Well, we got sunshine in the forecast for today, so that's good uh, with light winds. What a difference. And a little more tolerable cold out there today with highs uh, in the lower teens. Boy, it's going to be a struggle to get there, but we should be able to make it. And then tonight, we're dropping off into the single digits briefly, and then temperatures rise towards morning as southeast winds kick in. Then for your Thursday, low 40s. Areas without snow will be a little bit warmer than that. And mid 40s on Friday, but areas without snow, probably lower 50s. And then as we head into the weekend, we cool down a little on Saturday. Cold front swings through and gives us cloud cover, maybe a little rain or snow shower. And then a bigger system rides out of the Rockies for Sunday into Sunday night. Uh, path of this storm is going to be very critical on whether we get rain and 50s or snow and 30s. And Ooh. literally, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough call. It's way too early to kind of throw any amounts out there. But we will see accumulating snow in the state. Right now, most models are favoring areas just west and northwest of the FM area. So... Keep up so the date. You're telling me there's another chance for snow. There is, and then we've got a couple more storm systems uh, that'll be traversing the northern central plains uh, oh, through about yeah. the 10th or 14th of the month. So, right on. A little man. bit of a stormier pattern that I we're I got to tell you what. Although we had snow, it was very refreshing to see something different. Well, it's been brown the last two and a half months. I mean, months. it's been a nice shade uh, of golden bronze. Don't get me wrong, but just the pristine white. Everything is super bright. I don't know, it was just kind of a mood booster, I guess, in my opinion. I don't know about you, but. <laughs> I didn't want to. Were you out driving in it yesterday, Mr. Mood Booster? Uh, no. Yeah, no. well, then I there you go. I stayed home. Yeah, well. And I watched it from my window yeah, like you well, should have done. Then, you know, that's fine. You should have said your well, snow drift shut your uh, door, your garage door too far. You couldn't get out. Some of drifts. us actually have to drive into work to, Yeah, that must know. be a, 
Real bummer. <laughs> it was yesterday. You should find a job 80 <laughs> miles away from where you live. But the gym was open. The gym was open. The gym I was bet open it was. After work. Yeah. And it was packed. <laughs> it was packed. Yeah, did you cram that whole case in your fridge? I did. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. What do we got coming on the show today? We got some tickets. What is that? Sportsman show that we're giving away? We got tickets from Sportsman show we'll be giving away. We're either going to do, we're going to, uh, we're yeah. not sure. Well, we're either we're gonna gonna doing do a giveaway. We're, are we going to do guess the sound or did you want to do the other thing I had in mind? Well, the other thing's pretty fun. Let's think about it over the next segment or okay. two. We'll be doing a giveaway regardless. Yeah. So we'll be giving away a pair of Sportsman show tickets. Uh, that's always a good time. And, Kind of gets you in the mood for uh, generally for summer, and uh, boat so show we'll tickets. Be, we'll be doing that, and we have Angie, a, a familiar guest. She's been on the show a yeah, few times, several times. Angie Johnson from NDSU Farm and Ranch Safety Specialist. And uh, if you have any questions for Angie, uh, feel free to give us a call on the Red Wing Shoes Hotline seven zero one two nine three nine thousand. That's seven zero one two nine three nine thousand. Uh, Angie's always a wealth of information. So She's got a bunch of good tips, too, as well. So she's got a lot going on. And, of course, our regular reminders of what's going on now and what will be coming on just around the corner when it comes to uh, spring planting. There's going to be a lot of things to kind of have a friendly reminder on when it comes to safety. And, uh, of course, if you got any stories or tips you want to share with us, 701-293-9000 is that Red Wing Shoes phone line. Uh, again, for those who are maybe just rejoining us or joining the program here, uh, we did uh, announce the winner of that guess the snowfall for yesterday's blizzard. Uh, that was Sue K. So, Sue, if you're just joining us, uh, you won that productive alternative rain gauge. You can just give the studio a call or show up here at the studio uh, sometime between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. You're just going to need to show a photo ID to be able to claim that rain gauge. So that way we don't have random Bob coming in here and taking Sue's rain gauge. <laughs> Can't would, be having that. No. It's happened one too many times. It doesn't happen again. <laughs> fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Well, you, you can't fool me again, right? That's the old saying. Something like that. Something like I don't that. think that's the case with you, though. Sorry. <laughs> oh, so I uh, had a couple of questions on the LRC uh, emailed to me. Um, and I'll be, uh, if you're listening, I'll be getting back to you on those real quickly. Um, and one of the questions I was going to ask Angie is, um, I know calving season is, is coming up here real quick as well. And, uh, calving season being right around the corner, I've already had a few ranchers reach out, uh, one from down in Nebraska. They start their calving season a little earlier. Uh, and, uh, basically they want to know, you know, using the LRC, what are we looking at? Any big storms, big cold snaps. And so we'll be talking with Angie a little bit about that and, how um, how does that affect? It? Is is there anything uh, in terms of safety during calving season that stands out like something that should be kind of uh, kind of noted? So we'll have more on that with Angie, and uh, she's coming up here. It's about one fifteen. So let's hear from our American Ag Network, and then when we come back, we will uh, we'll talk to Angie and uh, have your questions ready. Seven zero one two nine three nine thousand. Again, that's seven zero one two nine three. 9,000. Yeah, just, uh, just a little update there. Our, uh, Ag Network is down, so uh, we won't have market updates today. Uh, and we might not actually have them for a couple of days. Something on their receiving end is all oh, messed up, so we're not getting any word from the Ag Network. But we got something else that's really nice to hear. You're going to hear it right now. <laughs> the Great Outdoors awaits you as Happy Harry's presents the Sportsman Show, February 29th through March 3rd at the Fargo Dome. Resorts, lodges, boats, pontoons, campers, and RVs. Show information at FargoSportsShow.com. From ABC News, Wall Street Now. The Dow Jones was lower for a third morning as investors await tomorrow's inflation data. The index was down by 0.15% going into the midday. The S&P was off a fraction. The Nasdaq was lower by a third of a percent. Chrysler is recalling 338,000 Jeep Grand Cherokee models built between 2021 and 2023 over an issue that could result in the loss of vehicle control. Dealers will replace certain steering components free of charge. Starbucks and Workers United, the union organizing the company's baristas, have agreed to start new talks. Employees of nearly 400 Starbucks locations have voted to unionize. So far, though, none of those groups have reached a labor agreement. Streaming services are seeing a slowdown. Research firm Antenna says subscriber growth last year was just about half of what it was the year before. 
Netflix, Peacock, and Paramount Plus combined to drive most of the growth. Jim Ryan, ABC News. Attention farmers, are unexpected breakdowns leaving you stranded in the field? Don't let downtime hinder your harvest. Advanced Diesel Repair is your trusted partner in getting you back in action fast. Their technicians specialize in swift diagnostics and top-notch repairs, ensuring your diesel equipment is up and running in no time. With Advanced Diesel Repair, you can count on reliable service and minimal disruptions to your farming operation. Advanced Diesel Repair, conveniently located off the I-94 Wild Rice exit and online at ADRofHorace.com. For those physically demanding jobs, you need footwear that you can count on and a name that you can trust. Hi, Teresa here from the Fargo Red Wing Shoe Store. Stop in during our Ultimate Fit event where you can find incredible deals to keep your feet comfortable and safe. Stop in now through March 17th for the Ultimate Fit experience and receive $10 off orthotics. Plus, don't miss the buy two, get one promotion for socks and accessories. Red Wing Shoes, the ultimate choice for those who work hard. Visit us today and experience the difference at 3003 Man Avenue in Fargo. Red Wing Shoes for ultimate durability. Hi, Vince from Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables 2. I get it. You don't want to buy a hot tub. Too much money, too much work, never going to use it. Everything you've heard about why not to buy a hot tub, I've heard it too. But here's the deal. You want to be the best possible version of yourself. Be a better husband, wife, mom or dad. Walk better, talk better, do everything better because of hot water than doing without it. Guaranteed. Save on all remaining 2023 models. Your wellness is within reach. Unleash the best possible you with Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables 2. The Great Outdoors awaits you as Happy Harry's presents the Sportsman Show, February 29th through March 3rd at the Fargo Dome. Resorts, lodges, boats, pontoons, campers, and RVs. Show information at FargoSportsShow.com. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Richard Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. Welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus, 118 in the afternoon. And again, a quick check on your currents. It is 6 degrees, but sunny outside. A west wind at 7 makes it feel closer to 6 below zero with your wind chill. We're heading into our guest segment now. We got Angie Johnson from NDSU Farm and Ranch Safety. Angie, how are you doing today? Thanks for coming back on the program with us. I'm glad we haven't scared you away. (laughs) <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's fun visiting with all of you. Well, we have fun getting all the information from you as well. And starting off with information, what's been what's been new over with you? What's going on in the last time we've uh, spoke? Oh man, our our Stop the Bleed program has really been taking off. We've had a ton of sessions already. Approximately, have trained about 150 people across the That's state, awesome. and we can we continue to go forward. We're having a session in Beulah tonight, mm-hmm. and then we kick off our our March sessions next week over at the North Dakota Winter Show, as well as out in West Northwest North Dakota, out in Granora and Crosby. And uh, Angie, for awesome. those for those that weren't joining us last time, I know we talked briefly about it. Um, explain what Stop the Bleed is, the program that you're uh, working with. Oh, absolutely. So Stop the Bleed is a is a national accredited program that was really focused and designed to teach the common person how to literally stop uh, a person from an active bleeding situation. And so, for example, uh, if you're working on the farm and you receive a deep laceration or puncture wound in your arm or your leg, Uh, This training allows you to learn how to properly pack that wound with gauze, as well as how to apply and and utilize a tourniquet so that victim stops bleeding. Because not a lot of people know this, but you can actually bleed out to death in as little as three to five minutes. And so it's really critical that we teach people how to stop an active bleed situation so that way they can make it to the next level of, of emergency care. Yeah, I think it's really important. And another thing, too, with that is, you know, people who live outside of a, a larger town or a, or a city, they have to wait quite a while for an ambulance to show up sometimes. And I know that that's been a big thing on the conversation board about is rural emergency services and some people having to wait. What is it, is it 45 minutes or is it over an hour in some spots from when you make a call to when that ambulance might show up? 
Yeah, you're spot on. So it really depends where you're at in the state. And so one of our big target areas is actually Northwest North Dakota. We're covering the entire state, don't get me wrong, uh, but we're really trying to capture Northwest North Dakota because you are right. There are response times out in that area that are 45 to 60 minutes plus. And, and that's simply because of the geography, right? There's not a lot of communities, it's very widespread. And then when you think about you know, production agriculture, we work out in the middle of the nowhere. Our field is literally the our fields and, and pastures and cropland. And so we're already kind of at a disadvantage in terms of being close to emergency response care. And so time is everything. If we can help people and train them themselves to be able to intervene right away and, and help prepare that person for when emergency services can arrive, we can potentially save lives. Well, right about. Imagine even if you're a quarter mile, half mile off a road out in the middle of a field and response times are 40 minutes from when you make that call to when an ambulance shows up. And you just mentioned, you know, obviously depending on the severity, but you can bleed out and die in a matter of, of minutes depending on the injury. So I think that information is really critical in saving lives. Uh, from the events that you've done so far, what's been the general feedback on people that are taking these classes and learning from you? Yeah, very, very positive. I mean, I think there's a lot of fear when it comes to, you know, hearing the word stop the bleed, right? It sounds like such a medical term. It's only for EMS. It's only for first responders. And that is so far from the truth. I mean, they're included in this process. We want those particular individuals to come because oftentimes they're volunteer farmers and ranchers themselves that right. serve in those volunteer capacities. But the biggest thing is, is this is meant for everyone. You do not have to be a medic, a paramedic. This is designed for the common person to be able to intervene and get that person the help they need in, in those minutes that matter. And Angie, is it too late uh, for anybody that, that wants to sign up if, if they're just listening today and thank God, man, that'd be a oh, great it's, idea. It's never, it's never too late. We're, <laughs> we're actively taking, uh, like I said, next week we're in Valley City during the North Dakota Winter Show. So we've got two sessions going going on both days of the winter show. We've got sessions coming up uh, more local for, for your local listeners in Argusville in April and Wapaton in April. Uh, and so if, if there, there are lots of opportunities and they'll start over again, uh, we'll probably take a break during the summer, but then they'll start back up again uh, August and, and into the spring season next year. This, this grant is for three years, so we've got lots of opportunities oh, awesome. to bring this program to a community near you. And, and Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you Justin. have to register to go to this or can you just show up and, and walk in? That's a great question. So in a perfect world, we are trying to gather registrations and that's simply just to help us. We want to make sure that we fill a session. So we, our minimum requirement to conduct a training is 10 people. So uh, honestly, if people could register, it just helps us make sure we have enough participants and bring enough supplies because What's really awesome about this program is every participant, you get to go home with a tourniquet, uh, a pack of gauze and gloves all in a nice little kit that you can put in your tractor, combine, work pickup, uh, you name it, where your shop, you know, wherever you're going to have the most access to it. So you actually get home to go home with tools that you would need in that type of emergency. Right. And I would imagine this would be beneficial for someone who's not even directly uh, in ag, just as general knowledge to, to be able to help somebody. But uh, if somebody wanted to register for this or get a little more information on when the next class is and where Stop the Bleed is going to be held, where could they go to register and find that information outside of what we just talked about? Yeah, uh, use your favorite search engine, so Google or Yahoo, whatever you like to use, and, and it's easiest to just type in NDSU extension, stop the bleed, and when you'll, that'll take you to our homepage that has all of the upcoming sessions uh, that, that, are, that are going to be taking place this spring. Awesome, awesome. And, and the majority of the people, I know you said you don't have to be a paramedic or anything like that, or, but I'm guessing the majority of these are, are farmers. Have any of, like, do they do they bring along any of their farm hands or, or, or helpers? Because, I mean, if let's use this for an example. If you're, if you're out in the tractor, you're probably not going to be alone. Um, 
you're probably going to have some some farmhands or somebody helping you out there. Is it basically just the the, the farmers themselves and ranchers, or is, are they bringing any of their staff along with them that you've found out so far? Honestly, it's a little bit of both. So like you said, I mean, there are some operators that that are fortunate to, to have another worker or operator out there with them. But oftentimes you find yourselves working alone, too. And so we've had we we've had groups of workers come into some of our sessions with with their farm laborers. And then we've had also individual producers come as well. And so it's been a really good variety of um, and, and it's also been just rural residents. Right. Because you can live out in the country and not farm, but I bet you still have to mow your lawn and trim trees and take care of your farmyard. And so uh, we have people that don't necessarily farm, but live in a rural residence that, that they're coming to these trainings too, because they're dealing with equipment and tools that could cause severe bleeding trauma. And so we've had a really good variety, but you are right. I, in a perfect world, we really want to see, you know, the farmers as including their workers, all come to this training because we talk about communication and what do we do in an emergency situation. And out of these classes that you're doing for Stop the Bleed, is there any one uh, moment where somebody came up to you and said, you know what, I never knew that. I never knew that before. Yeah, we've actually had some that were just astonished that they could learn something like this, right? So going back to that comment about how well, I thought, you know, I thought this was just for medical people. And and so that realization of something so simple, you know, how to use a tourniquet and how to pack a wound, we've had a really positive response of, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I could take care of this on our own and, and be responsible and, and learn about this type of intervention tool. Is there is there a wrong way to use a tourniquet? That's a great question. And the answer is yes. Um, really? It, okay. You can actually, yeah, you can, you can cause damage if, if you don't apply it in the correct location or if you take it off too soon, uh, because then obviously you'll, you'll start actively bleeding out again. Uh, so, so there is a method to the madness in terms of how to do it, where to apply it. Uh, most people get scared and rightfully so I would be terrified too, because I will tell you it is painful. It is painful to have a tourniquet applied. And so if your victim is, is kicking and screaming, that is normal. Like it is going to be painful as heck when, when they are twisting and actively turning that Oof. tourniquet. Um, mm. and so that, that was something that a lot of people really had to wrap their heads around and, and be okay to understand that it will hurt. I can't imagine having to do that if you're out there by yourself and you have to apply oh, the tourniquet yourself. by yourself. Right. Yeah. Hey, oh. for those that are wondering, have no idea what we're even talking about right now, what's a tourniquet? Great question. Yeah, so a tourniquet is uh, the best way I can describe it without having one in my hands. Um, it's basically a straps apparatus that you would wrap around either your arm or your leg, so it's meant for limbs, right? You can't you can't apply the tourniquet on a trunk of the trunk of your body. So, so your chest and abdomen, uh, it has to be for extremities and, and you apply that strap and there's a, there's a, there's a wind loss or a turning brace on it that you actively continually spin. And when you spin that, it tightens the, the canvas or that, that fabric that comprises the tourniquet. It continues to tighten and tighten and tighten. And the purpose of tightening it is to squeeze that, that artery or vein so hard that it quits pumping out blood. So it quits that, that the, your arm or leg from, from losing blood. And, and that's why it's critical because if your body continues to lose and pump out that much blood, you can unfortunately die and, or, or pass away. And so that's what that tourniquet apparatus is, is just a tool that you put on your arm or your leg to, to really start twisting and twisting down hard to get the blood from stop mm. to, to stop flowing. And do they do after the after they uh, take these classes, do you send them home with that apparatus? Yes. Okay. Yep. So every every participant gets to go home with or at least if you bring the whole farm family, you, you know, you'll get one per farm to get you started. And can you I mean, let's say they forget that uh, apparatus when they're out in the field, something happens. Uh, 
you can use other things to apply for a tourniquet to apply a, a tourniquet, a, a belt or or other things, or is that just not that doesn't work? You got to be really, really careful. Um, to to answer your question, uh, you're not wrong. You can. But just remember, um, some of those, you know, there's a lot of comments. Why can't I just use a stick? Why can't I use a stick as the turning apparatus uh. to tighten? Well, guess what? When you're applying that much pressure, that stick or twig, it break. will snap. Yep. And then you're in big trouble when that breaks. Um, the other thing, too, is people will say, well, Angie, I could just use a screwdriver and, and tighten it. And <laughs> oh, my gosh, like if that gets loose. That screwdriver is going to puncture and that could puncture your arm or your leg. Right. I mean, it could make things worse is what but, I'm trying to say. So but Angie, I got my handy dandy DeWalt on my hip. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, it's not handy dandy for this situation. So yeah, keep it in your holster. Um, <laughs> oh, no, my biggest advice. I mean, you can get away. So I will tell you this when it comes to gauze, right? So basically gauze is just a, a fancy cloth that the whole point is, is trying to, to clot, right? It, its goal is to clot and stop the blood from, from oozing out. And mm -hmm. so you can use shirts, you can use pants. I mean, that kind of throws people off because their first worry is, well, what about infection? And it's like, I don't care about infection. If you bleed out to death, we don't have to worry about infection. The first thing is, is we got to stop that blood loss. And so you can tear up your shirt into strips. You can use your pants, uh, whatever you can to pack that wound, you know, similar to, to gauze. So that I can advocate for, but when it comes to substituting for a tourniquet, you have to be really, really careful because that can, um, that, that can make a situation worse. God. All right. Well, Angie, uh, we're coming up on break. Um, so we're going to take a short recess. Don't want anybody to go anywhere. And again, yeah, if you got... have any questions for Angie, 701-293-9000. Um, Mark, you'll be first when we come back from the yeah. bottom hour news. Yeah. And, and Angie, you said you have, uh, I believe, some summer camps coming up. So we'll have questions on that for you, as well as many more coming up here shortly right after the break. Okay, so you've heard about the Sunday brunch at Barron's Eatery at Kingpin's every Sunday. Well, wait till you see how they're amping it up a bit for Easter. Sunday, March 31st from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Join us at Barron's at Kingpin's for their Easter brunch. Smokehouse ham, build your own waffle bar, two chef's entree specials, baked Reggiano hash browns, biscuits and gravy, garlic mashed potatoes with gravy, their thick cut hickory smoked bacon, sausage links. They're doing a chef's special egg bake along with the regular regular egg bake, fresh caramel rolls made to order, assorted fruit, assorted pastries and croissants, and of course the dessert bar. 25 bucks for adults, kids eat for 15 bucks, 12 and under. You're going to need to call for a reservation though. 701-532-BOWL, push extension 2. 701-532-BOWL, extension 2. Or stop into Barron's host stand and make your reservation there. Barron's Eatery at Kingpins for Easter brunch. We'll see you there. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. Minnesota Senate Republicans have introduced a new agenda called Repair Minnesota. According to caucus leaders, this is an effort to fix several DFL-backed bills and laws passed over the past two years. The legislative agenda is split into a few separate bills, primarily focused on issues impacting taxes. Cass County Sheriff Jesse Johnner is concerned about what many drivers aren't doing while traveling in blizzard conditions. We've got a number of people out driving around without their lights on, mm. and um, we, that, that's been, a, been an issue, especially if you're in those whiteout conditions and you come up behind someone and they don't have their lights on so you can't see their taillights. That can cause rear-end um, situations or even head-on um, situations. The sheriff says many drivers get used to relying on automatic headlight features on their vehicles, which don't operate the same during daylight hours. The North Dakota Industrial Commission has approved a $300,000 grant for carbon capture education. We're told the money will allow a Bismarck-based communications company to develop a strategy to inform the public about capturing and using greenhouse gases. And the chair of the North Dakota PERS board is resigning. The board oversees the benefits and retirement of public employees in the state. 
Tom Tucker, WDAY, and WDAYRadioNow.com. Morton Buildings is hiring, so whether you're switching careers or just graduating high school, listen up. Hey, Will here. I'm 23 years old. I found my groove with a nationally recognized brand, doing what I love with an awesome crew and making some serious bank. Morton doesn't just pay well, they've got bad weather pay. Even if it's too hot or too cold, I still get paid up to 100 hours, whether I use them or not. Last year, I won a trip to Jamaica just for doing my job. And get this, quarterly bonuses. Why wouldn't you join the team? Go to mortonbuildings.com careers for a career that's awesome. Don't wait. Your future is calling with Morton Buildings. Weather and Ag in Focus on WDAY Radio. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. And most days, yes, it is a zoo over here on the program. It's still early. Still is early. Yeah, why not? I, I got to hear the goat. And I know that Steve over there on YouTube needs to hear it as well. So here you go, Steve. <laughs> I'm screaming goat. Hey, if you want to join in on the program today, ask some questions. 701-293-9000 is the Red Wing Shoes phone line. We got Angie Johnson on the line with us today. We love having Angie on with us. She's from NDSU Farm and Ranch Safety Specialist. And we got Mark on line one. Mark, thanks for calling. What's your question for Angie? Hi, Angie. Hi. Uh, maybe we could enlighten some of the lay people like myself or whatever, whether you use a certified tourniquet type thing or maybe a makeshift, when do you know if tight is tight enough? I think I know the answer, and that means when the blood flow stops. But no, That's a great question. And, and, yeah, so a little bit earlier we talked about, you know, whether or not to use makeshift tourniquets, and I – uh, to be 100% honest with you, which I, I always am an honest person, it's it's really best to use a certified tourniquet. They are designed to take on that excess pressure that you are going to be, that, that twisting pressure that you're going to be applying. And so the goal is, is yes, you want to stop the bleeding. And so you're going to, you're going to twist that on there as, as tight as you physically can. And it is going to hurt the victim. They are going to be screaming in pain. And so that, that's something that we make sure we tell participants is that that is a normal response because it is painful. And so you want to, the, the best advice is you want to continue to turn that tourniquet until you physically can't anymore. And one other step too that often gets forgotten about is you want to write down whether that's on, on, on a lot of these tourniquets, they'll have a space for you to write down what time you applied that tourniquet because the, the hospital or the physician, they're going to want to know how long that tourniquet has been applied to that victim. So great, great questions. Very good. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for calling, Mark. Appreciate it. And it looks like we got Jeff also on the line. I got a couple open lines if you want to sneak in here, 701-293-9000. Jeff, thanks for calling. Do you also have a question for Angie? I do. Fire well, away. I'm going to laugh too hard, but uh, <laughs> uh, so it's fine. funny they should be talking about bleeding right now. I'm on my home from a road trip here, and all at once my nose just started bleeding like profusely, and it won't stop. Can I put a tourniquet on my nose? <laughs> I just want to make it very clear, everybody. I am not a, I am not an MD. I am not a physician, and so like I, my medical advice advice is limited. But maybe get a tissue shoved up there. But yeah, no, you're not going to be able to apply that tourniquet. I did that, and they already, they all came out. So not to gross you out, but they all came out soaking wet, and I keep putting, I get there. <laughs> Jeff, I'd recommend putting two tissues up there. Hey, thanks for calling. And if you try that tourniquet on the nose, right. let me know. Yeah, let me know how it goes for you. <laughs> oh man! Well, Angie, you're running some uh, uh, summer camps for farm safety coming up here. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, we've got a really busy jam-packed summer coming up with our youth farm safety camps. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so basically uh, kind of how this program got started is um, the U.S. Department of Labor back in, oh man, the early to mid-60s, they, they created a law that really focused on teenage youth, so youth age 14 and 15, if they want to work on a farm other than their own family farm, 
they have to go through a certification program. And so in, in North Dakota, that can be conducted through your local extension office or through an ag ed program at, at your local school. And we really needed to, once I, once I took this position on, one of my goals was is to really elevate that program and take it to the next level. Because in the past, uh, that, that certification really focused around strictly tractor operation. And, and so we started out that way and we realized uh, and we knew that kids aren't just operating tractors when they work on a farm. They're doing a lot of different other tasks. And so how do we ac accomplish kind of a holistic farm safety approach when it comes to these teenage workers? And, and that's how we created these camps. And so they're a three day two night, very extensive uh, hands-on training, really, really, I call it a workforce development training because these kids are, they're learning how to operate tractors, skid steers, ATVs. And then they, we also have a section on farm first aid, roadway safety. We do a whole unit on livestock handling. Uh, we just, we accomp accomplish as much as we can in that three-day period on different tasks that we feel our young people are going to be conducting when they get to a farm. And, and where are these going to be located at, Angie? Yeah, so our first one will be up in Minot, May 21st through the 23rd. Then we'll be moving uh, back east to Devil's Lake on May 29th through the 31st. And then we round things off, heading our way back towards Bismarck on June 25th through the 27th. Awesome. Good deal. Awesome. We got another phone call here on the Red Wing Shoes phone line. Again, 701-293-9000 if you want to join in on the conversation. And uh, we got Al here. Al, you got a question for Angie? Sure. Yeah. So like on a farm accident or something like that there, at what point do you decide whether amputation is a good good way to go or or trying to get them out of the machinery? Holy smokes. Okay, wow. again, so I just it's a great question. It's a fantastic question. I just want to preface the fact that I am not not a doctor, a, me a medic, um, and so I I, I apologize. I am unable to answer that question. If there's any EMS folks out there that would feel more comfortable taking that on, I would definitely appreciate the phone a friend. Uh, but I apologize. I, I'm oh, not no, the best one to answer that question. No, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I just think, you know, out, out in the field, things happen, you know, and, and uh, yeah, just, it was just a, just a question. Hey, well, thanks no, for asking. No, it's a great Al. question. It's a real good question. It is. But, uh, right. yeah, maybe we'll see if we can find someone that might be able to answer that kind of question and get them on in the near future. How about that, Al? Sounds good. All yeah. right, thanks for calling. Good deal. Appreciate it. Yeah. And if you're, if you're listening, um, uh, if you are EMS, shoot us yeah. a call. Give us the answer for yeah, that. That's, that'd be great. Uh, that'd be interesting to find out. That's uh, Does that happen often, Angie? Where it would be that I mean, severe? more than more than we know yeah i mean there's wow. definitely times where i mean off the top of my head i can think of you know baylor related injuries uh combine related injuries where you're you're sticking your hand in that piece of equipment while it's still running so a big no-no right always shut it down before performing some maintenance or trying to fix something um and so yes absolutely there can be amputations that occur that you know clearly sever the limb um, and, and I actually have a very good friend who he lost his arm that way and in a baler and it was, it was due to the belts and the belts literally, I mean, it just, it severed and sheared his arm right off, but it wasn't actively bleeding because it cauterized itself. It, it, it heated itself so much that it stopped that bleed from going. Oh, and wow. so it just depends on the situation. Right. I was going to say, I thought I remember hearing a story a few years ago of a guy who had both his arms done and he actually survived from it because uh, either the pressure or the heat cauterized his arms and they, he didn't bleed out from it. Yeah. That's, it just man, depends gruesome. on Yeah. It's it, 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 there's so many different things that could happen. You know, it, it could cauterize itself or it could be an active bleeder and, and, and happen very quickly. It doesn't right. take long to, to have that massive amount of blood loss. Right. Well, Hey, Angie, um, I know I still have a bunch of questions. We're running out of time in this segment. Uh, do you got a few more minutes to hang around for another segment, or do you got something going on after this? Nope. I, my time is yours, so I, I'd enjoy it. 
Awesome. Well, why don't we hit a quick break here? When we come back, I got a few questions to ask you and also a few reminders because spring planting is on the way and people are going to be getting that equipment back out in the field. I'd love to know a few tips and things to maybe slow down or be a little extra cautious about, or maybe just that, Hey, friendly reminder, don't, don't do this if you're in a rush. Uh, and again, if you want to ask Angie a question, feel free to do so. Give us a call on the Red Wing Shoes phone line, 701-293-9000. We'll see you guys here in just a couple minutes. For those physically demanding jobs, you need footwear that you can count on and a name that you can trust. Hi, Teresa here from the Fargo Red Wing Shoe Store. Stop in during our Ultimate Fit event where you can find incredible deals to keep your feet comfortable and safe. Stop in now through March 17th for the Ultimate Fit experience and receive $10 off orthotics. Plus, don't miss the buy two, get one promotion for socks and accessories. Red Wing Shoe is the ultimate choice for those who work hard. Visit us today and experience the difference at 303 Man Avenue in Fargo. Red Wing Shoes for ultimate durability. The great outdoors awaits you as Happy Harry's presents the Sportsman Show, February 29th through March 3rd at the Fargo Dome. Resorts, lodges, boats, pontoons, campers, and RVs. Show information at FargoSportsShow.com. This is a shout out to all hardworking farmers and ranchers. If you're looking for the cream of the crop in post frame construction, look no further than Thor Buildings. Because let's face it, having the right size building for your equipment or livestock is crucial for your success. At Thor Buildings, they'll design your building for max efficiency, customized to tackle the seasonal weather in your neck of the woods. Post frame construction tailored to your livestock and ag needs. Buildings built better, stronger, and built to last. So when it's time to put the hammer down, build with Thor. Visit ThorBuildings.com today. Hi, Vince from Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables 2. I get it. You don't want to buy a hot tub. Too much money, too much work, never going to use it. Everything you've heard about why not to buy a hot tub, I've heard it too. But here's the deal. You want to be the best possible version of yourself. Be a better husband, wife, mom or dad. Walk better, talk better, do everything better because of hot water than doing without it. Guaranteed. Save on all remaining 2023 models. Your wellness is within reach. Unleash the best possible you with Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Olivet Lutheran Church in Fargo invites you to join us for worship Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30 and Wednesday evenings at 6. Our theme for Lent this year is Gifted for Mission, where we will reflect on Jesus' great commission to tell the story of Jesus' love for all people without exception. Worship with us Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30 and Wednesday evenings at 6. For more information and to watch all of our services online, go to olivet.org. Encounter Jesus, experience grace at Olivet Lutheran Church. It's Jay and Ronnie from the Coffee Club, and we enjoy drinking coffee because it keeps us energized and focused. Well, let's be frank. I enjoy drinking coffee because coffee keeps me wide-eyed in the morning, but I'll tell you this. This type of coffee is organic, specialty-grade coffee, beans selected from the top 2% available, 100% Arabica bean coffee, certified organic, non-GMO, low acidity, rich, smooth, and ready to drink. The finish is clean and it has a pleasant aftertaste. It's delicious. It's so far the best coffee that we've had. It's also roasted and packed in the U.S. of A. We love it and we guarantee you will too. All you need to do is go to mystore.com, click on my coffee and enter the promo code WDAY. That's promo code WDAY to get your own my coffee. It's also roasted and packed in the U.S. of A. We love it and we guarantee you will too. Go to mystore.com, promo code WDAY. Why? The great outdoors awaits you as Happy Harry's presents the Sportsman Show, February 29th through March 3rd at the Fargo Dome. Resorts, lodges, boats, pontoons, campers, and RVs. Show information at FargoSportsShow.com. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is. And it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Bridget Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. I want to thank everybody for joining us, 150 in the afternoon. Uh, joining us uh, today, Angie Johnson. She's the NDSU Farm and Ranch Safety Specialist. And Angie, a couple of questions here left before um, we are done for the day here. Calving season's coming up. 
any tips or advice that you might have for uh, maybe any new ranchers or just uh, just tips in general on on safety during calving season yeah no that's a great i'm glad you brought that up and we're actually so i've i raised cattle with my family and we're actually calving right now and as you start the season one of the things i think we take for granted is uh, we got to remember their animals right and so their behavior out in the lot or, or at the feed bunk is going to be a lot different than when they're actively getting ready or giving birth. I mean, their job is to protect that newborn calf and they they will do whatever it takes to, to make sure that calf is safe. And sometimes that means they may think of you as a threat. And so my biggest advice is uh, never trust that cow, but respect her. So be prepared, you know, don't turn your back uh, on, on those animals and have an exit plan ready. If you've got them in pens or need to get them in pens, what's your strategy to make sure you can get out of the way if she decides to, to come after you? Mm. There it is. All right. We got Lyle on the line here on the Red Wing Shoes phone line. Uh, Lyle, thanks for calling and listening. What's your question for Angie? Hi, Angie. Um, you probably already mentioned it, but if I want to get one of those tourniquets, do you have a recommended site or Amazon? And then the other part of my question, I suppose if I can't attend your seminar, I suppose there's YouTubes explaining how to use it too. Yeah, so those, those are great questions. Uh, you know, step one is, yes, if you can attend one of our Stop the Bleed sessions, that would be the best. And so, I'll, of course, advocate for that. But I understand not everybody can. Um, so if you are looking to purchase a tourniquet to have, I highly recommend. Uh, so all of the tourniquets that we provide during our Stop the Bleed trainings are actually certified Stop the Bleed tourniquets. And so if you, you go online and just Google or type in your favorite favorite search engine, Stop the Bleed, uh, it, you'll be taken to the Stop the Bleed homepage where they actually have an area where you can buy, you can buy just a tourniquet or you can buy a complete personal kit like we're giving out during our trainings that has gauze, a tourniquet, gloves, and a marker in it. So that's my recommendation in terms of purchasing. You certainly can go on Amazon and, and make those purchases, but uh, I, I definitely am an advocate for the the test tried and true tested tourniquets that the Stop the Bleed Coalition offers to individuals. Um, in terms of the education part, that's where it gets a little dicey. I guess I'm not um, I'm not a huge advocate of what fears me is that if if you go to YouTube, you might find a variety of of ways that aren't the best practices when it comes to properly using a tourniquet. And so, um, what I what I would encourage, if possible, and I know it it might not work out, but if if you could work with your county extension agent and have them hook you up with with a stop the bleed training that's closest to you that would be the best way to actually get trained and get some hands-on practice because we provide all of the training tools where you actually get to pack got there's yeah we have different training stumps and i know that sounds gruesome but we bring the stumps to your community and you actually have to practice packing it with gauze and you actually practice applying a tourniquet on that stump and on yourself so you can kind of get that understanding of how it feels um and and how you would really need to get it so that that's my so that that's my best recommendations for you sure i could probably check with our local rescue squad too but thank you very much hey. for the, answering my questions yep thanks for calling lyle appreciate it great questions there all right, Angie, we're getting close on spring. It felt like we were a lot closer two days ago than we are today, <laughs> but we're actually closer today than we were two days ago. Uh, we're going to be getting out in the field soon. People are going to be loading up equipment with seed, hauling different kinds of plows or cultivators or any other equipment that they're going to be needing to, to put seed in the ground. What's some common things that people usually overlook when it comes to safety or some friendly reminders when it comes to uh, spring plant. Yeah, I mean, this is where I apologize because I sound like a broken record every time, but I can't, <laughs> I can't stress enough roadway safety because, I mean, spring it's hectic. It's it's a very narrow window, and uh, I mean, it's just we we want to plant as early as we can, right? That's the end goal, and so that just means we get a, a large flux of equipment. 
trucks and and all at the same time while general share the road and so roadway safety is always going to be a big one another one that i think gets taken for granted is um you know oftentimes that that seed we're going to be placing in our planters or our drills you know it's it's got it's got an insecticide on it it's got a seed treatment on it and so are we making sure we're wearing gloves or at least having some type of respiratory mask or protection uh, so we're not breathing in that seed treatment? Because we got to remember uh, that that seed treatment, its its whole purpose is to is to kill insects, right? And and so it's an insecticide, oftentimes an insecticide product. And the way they work is that they attack the insect's nervous system. <laughs> well, guess what, folks? Uh, we all have a really great <laughs> nervous system too. And and so we just need to be respectful and just don't forget to wear some personal protective equipment, wear some gloves and PPE when you're handling that stuff so you're not unintentionally breathing in that dust or or getting that material on your skin right and i got about a, a about a minute left for people who want to get more information on the stop the bleed classes and the summer camps that'll be going on where can they go to to get that information find the dates and where it's available for them yeah, absolutely. Type in NDSU Extension Farm Safety. And yep, you've got it pulled up on your screen. You'll see information about our camps. You'll see information about our Stop the Bleed. We have a whole host of, we, we've just got a lot of things going on. And we really look forward to, to serving our youth and our farmers and ranchers throughout the season. Awesome. Well, really appreciate it, Angie. I'm sure we're going to be having you on very soon again, because I know there's going to be equipment going in the field. People might be getting stuck and there might be some safety issues when it comes to pulling out stuck equipment. So we'll hold off to that till the next time we talk and some more. But again, Angie Johnson, th uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. This was an awesome conversation. Awesome. Thanks, Angie. All right. Well, uh, we got a rundown on the forecast here. Our last minute of the show. What's the rest of the day well, and into the weekend looking like? A lot, lot of sunshine. We're still stuck in the single digits. Uh, we're Oof. hoping to get up to about. 11 that might be pushing it this afternoon so uh, unseasonably cold today it's been a while since we've said that uh down into the single digits tonight briefly and then we'll see steady to slowly rising temperatures as southeast winds increase and a breezy mild day for tomorrow highs in the low 40s areas without snow cover about five degrees warmer than that and then uh, mid 40s on friday with some areas in the low 50s without snow cover then we'll bring clouds back in on Saturday, cool it down back into the upper 30s, maybe a rain or snow shower. And then Sunday, a larger system comes our way out of the Rockies, and it looks like we'll be on the warm side of this initially, bringing us rain and then possibly changing over to snow Sunday night into Monday. We'll keep a close eye on that, uh, as some areas of North Dakota will be getting some measurable snow out of that system Sunday into Sunday night. So that'll do it for today on Weather and Ag in Focus. Want to thank everybody for joining us. Make sure, don't go anywhere. Make sure to stay tuned for the Jay Thomas Show that's coming up next. Whoa!